Hey, Chad, how are you, man? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, really good. Really good. Hey, man, it's really good to hear your voice. It's been a little while since we've spoken. So, uh, how, what's happening? Nada, man. Just, uh, just got home from tour a couple weeks ago, and I'm just, I cannot get motivated. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to do anything. <laughs> uh, well, it is a, I guess it's Friday. Before then. I listen. <laughs> It is. It's Friday, and it feels like a Friday. Every day has felt like a Friday since I've been home. It's crazy. Oh, man, you must be loving it. You must be loving it. But, uh, man, i, I got to say, I didn't have a mud vein with Cold Chamber Australian Tour on my bingo card for 2024. But here we are, and, dude, everyone is so fucking excited. Like, I don't know if you've gotten word of that over there, but we are so pumped, man. Yeah, dude. Everybody, like, I saw a post that we did today uh, on our social media on Instagram, and dude, a lot of people down there are like, got my tickets for Perth, got my tickets for Sydney, got my tickets. <laughs> like, people are excited, and we, and dude, honestly, it's it's reverberating with us. You know what I mean? Like, mm. we are all very very excited to come back down there again, man. We haven't been there in eighteen years. Fuck. You awesome. know, it's just it's so fucking crazy i didn't realize it'd been that long i have a friend down there she lives in sydney and she's like i haven't seen you like you guys haven't been down here in 18 years i'm like are you kidding me she's like no she's like i came and saw you the first time 18 years ago when i was 13 years old and she's like i'm I'm getting ready to turn 31 and i'm like wow (laughs) that's pretty pretty over the top but we're just just i mean like we were so, we loved it so much down there. Like you have such a beautiful country. The people are absolutely fucking amazing. Um, what's not to love? I mean, we're, we're so excited to come down there, man, and, and, and play our music for all of our, uh, all of our metal kids and our mud band family, man. It's going to, it's going to be exciting. Oh, it's we're gonna, all really, really pumped. It's going to be incredible, dude. It's going to be so good. I'm going to be in Brisbane. I've got yeah. it on the calendar, and I'm going to be crossing off the days. But uh, you you mentioned just re- you recently <laughs> wrapped up the uh, psychotherapy sessions tour with Cold Chamber and Nonpoint and Gore and Butcher Bates. Yeah. Like, I love all those bands. How was that tour, man? It looked yeah. incredible. Dude, I'm telling you what, dude. It is very, very rare that five bands and five crews can go out on the road and get along. Like, it's, it's just very rare. There's always something. There's always, like, one crew guy that doesn't like another crew guy or one band dude that doesn't like another band dude. There's always some kind of thing going on. And, man, dude, it was just, like, it was fucking perfect. It was, like, summer camp. Everybody got along. All the bands are bros. Um, you know, uh, to me, I'm, all the crews got along, man. Like, from the people that rigged the lights to the people that tuned the guitars to everybody. Like it was just, it was a lot of fun, man. Like we hung out a lot, like just like in the daytime, you know, chilling, just like finding a nice spot out in the, out in the sun or the shade and just hanging out and chilling out and, 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 and just growing down, man. It was a lot, a lot of fun. We had, a, we had a lot of fun. It was, it was a good time. And dude, no, I mean, the, the, fucking fans were just on fire like it was just people are genuinely excited kind of everywhere i <laughs> think about mud Vane yeah. coming back um you know it's been a minute since we've been down to you guys but like we came back here and toured and then we disbanded and went away for a decade you know so people are really excited um that we're back and we're really excited to be back you know so it's just it's just but yeah, the tour was amazing, and, and just I mean, from the bands to the kids to the people and the, the fans, and it was fucking phenomenal. It was a great, great summer. Mudvayne is definitely a, a different beast to hell, yeah. Which was the last time I believe we saw you down here. Did you find that it, it took some time yep. to slip back into that version of yourself, or did you find it sort of just you, you just switch it on like a switch? Well, I mean, after Vinny passed. You know, we all just kind of like, everybody just went down. You know what I mean? Like, hell yeah, just just pulled apart. I mean, he was he was really the glue that held everything together. And we're all, we're all still great friends, man. But, but that was brutal. It was hard for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Vinny was more than a drummer and a brother to me, but he was, he was a hero. 
you know? So it was like, you know, it's like when Dime got shot, you know, it's just like mm-hmm. fucking, it's just something inside of you just gets torn apart. And, uh, you know, so hell yeah, it was definitely, you know, in my mind, like kind of done. And I was just longing for this thing that I hadn't been a part of for so long, you know? And, you know, we got on the phone and just were kind of catching up and, and, uh, it just felt really natural and really organic. And the first time we got in a room to start going back over these songs again and putting them back together, man, it was, it was really fucking special. You know, I was not expecting it to feel the way that it felt, but you know, it just felt like a hug. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it felt like complete, completely comfortable. And I think we were all just excited about it because it, it had been so long. And then just to kind of like be playing those songs, you know, in a rehearsal space after not playing it for 10 years and like kind of going through them and fucking them up. You know what I mean? We definitely <laughs> fucked them up and, and it took a minute, it took a minute to put it together for sure. But like kind of when we we're doing it and we're kind of messing up together and we're laughing about it and, you know, uh, just looking around the room. You know what I mean? Like looking around the room and seeing those faces again was really great, you know? And I just, I, I just knew the first time that we got back together and started working this shit out, that something really special was going to happen. You want the fans to be excited, but you don't really know, mm. you know what I mean? You don't yeah, yeah. really know. You can't guarantee, you can't guarantee it. All you can do is hope, you know? So with, with our excitement, we were hoping that everyone would be as excited as we were. And when it happened and we announced and, you know, we announced long before we ever played even a first show, uh, the ground was rumbling. You know what I mean? Like people were genuinely excited, you know? So it was really cool, man. And like I said, it was really organic. It just felt natural. Like it didn't feel forced, which is great because if it did feel forced, I might not have wanted to do it. You know what I mean? I might have yeah, yeah. never gotten through the rehearsals uh, to do it if it didn't feel right. You know, if it felt forced. Because I'm, I'm just about, I'm about honesty. I mean, that is my whole fucking thing. Whether it's writing or living my life, I want to be an honest person. It's truth against the world to me, and uh, especially in my writing. You know, I, I write songs about my troubles and turmoil and and things um i write helpless songs but i write aggressive songs and i write almost violent songs um but it is literally um just an extension of whatever i'm feeling in that moment you know i mean when i am writing it when i'm you know tracking or whatever you know but those songs all come from a very a, a place that's probably a long time ago and, uh, you know, when I'm on stage and I'm performing those songs, I don't go back to the time that I recorded them. I go back to the time that inspired me to write them. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a lot of pain and a lot of re- reality um, in, in it, you know. So, um, yeah. So, again, back to if it was forced, I probably wouldn't have been into it. But it felt natural and real and organic and honest and truthful and vulnerable. And I like all those things. You know what I mean? I love, I love vulnerability. I love putting things out there and, and, and allowing it to be judged. You know what I mean? Like when, when, when artists do that, um, it's impossible that it won't be, you know? So I, I, I welcome it. I welcome people to, to embrace it or talk shit about it or can't throw it down. I don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I write for, for, for myself and, and hopefully, I can write uh, something that uh, will deep seed inside of someone and they can get something out of it. That's always my intention is that my music will help uh, someone. If it's just, even if it's just the idea that um, I'm letting them know that if they're sharing a feeling that they have about something that I'm writing or, mm-hmm. or whatever, that they're not alone. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, depression and anxiety and all the things, um, abuse and neglect and stuff. That's all, those are all very, very, very quiet places. You know what I mean? You do not scream that from the mountaintops. You know, it's embarrassing. You know, you don't go to school and go, God, my dad fucking beat the shit out of me last night. You just don't talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very lonely place. You know, if, uh, 
people can find some sort of peace and solace or connect with me on some level. Uh, the song makes them feel uh, not alone or makes them feel better uh, than, than I'm, I'm into it. And again, I like going back to the, if it felt forced, I wouldn't be into it. Like I just want, I, I feel like I'm here to do a job and uh, I want to do that job with these, with these players that I have in my vein. And I really enjoyed doing that job 20 fucking years ago. You know, I had a lot of fun doing it, um, you know, and uh, it was really cool. Uh, to leave a mark like we did to go away for a decade though and come back. Yeah. We went away for a decade and we came back and this is what's crazy. What we could expect, honestly, is just everybody going, Hey, can you come to our town and play? Hey, come to our town and play. Hey, come to our town and play. Come, come to our town and play your catalog. That's all we get. But dude, people want new music. Yeah, man. That's fucking over the top. That is like so fucking rad. It's like, Really? You don't just want us to play all the fucking songs that you know? It's like, no, we want to hear those songs, but we want you guys to write new music. Like, there is a lot of beating of that drum, man. Like, people are like, write new music, write new music. And we're like, okay. (laughs) You know, I mean, we just have to make sure, we just have to make sure it's what we all want. Uh, We have to make sure that it's, that it's mudvane. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm sure, even though I separated from that band for 10 years and I went and did Hell Yeah for six records, mm. I'm quite sure that I can still write Mud Band. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I know I can still uh, do something uh, with, with Mud Band and make it sound like Mud Band. You know what I mean? And, and there's always going to be, you know, with Hell Yeah, the whole point of Hell Yeah and the hardest part of Hell Yeah was making the music sound like me, not my bank. Yes. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the hard part. But at the end of the day, as long as it's me, it'll be me. You know what I mean? Uh, it's never going to be, you know, somebody else. It's always going to be Chad Gray. It's always going to be me, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm confident that we, that we write the music. It'll, it'll be fucking great. And I, and uh, we just have to make sure uh, that it's what we all want. You know what I mean? That's 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 the trick, you know. But Absolutely. that's the only trick, you know. Oh man, I, I can't wait. I need I need all of it. <laughs> you have no idea, man. Everyone's <laughs> talking about it, but uh, of course, you know it's uh you're talking about connecting with fans and stuff. It's generational now. I saw photos where there's young kids with their parents and grandparents and bro- older siblings and stuff. It I think even though you guys went away for a little while, that just shows the it's testament to a timeless band. Like you guys have made such a important mark because I think also you said about connecting with people through those lyrics. You, you must be loving that, like seeing that and connecting with the next generation as well. Oh dude, it's, it's been crazy. Like, so we like, we're back out and we're back out doing it. And I'm like looking at, yeah, obviously I'm standing in front of the crowd, you know, so I'm looking at the, at the faces, man. And, it's crazy because there, there was, there's a 10, there was this 10 year gap, you know, mm. so you've got these people that are 30, late thirties, forties, and maybe even early fifties shit up to pushing 60, you know what I mean? Um, years old. And then you look next to them and there's a kid that you can tell he's like probably 17 or fucking 25 or 26 or 27, you know what I mean? Or 23. It's just, it's so crazy because it's like, there's we went away but our music kept speaking to people and our music kept making the rounds and 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 getting introduced to new people through older people you know what i mean that's what we do you know we fucking turn people on to music that we love i had a fucking friend in in high school you know what i mean like well i was i can't remember i I think i was in eighth grade and he was in high school but he was a friend of mine he gave me ride the lightning he gave me the Metallica tape. He's like, dude, yes, you got to take this home and fucking listen to it. <laughs> I took it home and I listened to it and I brought it back to him and I gave it to him. And I'm like, dude, fucking thank you, man. Oh my God. And I went out and bought Ride the Lightning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I've got that happening in front of me. I've got that happening in front of me, dude. I'm witnessing it. This fucking 49 year old is handing this fucking kid or his son, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, playing his son, our music, and the fucking son. There's a whole crew of like, you know, 16 to 30 year olds, you know, that are brand new and never saw us fucking play. You know what I mean? So there's this whole crew of, of people out there, sub, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, like sub generation or whatever, uh, Generation X that's over here and they've never seen us and they're just fucking on fire you know what oh, i mean they're it. just they're so excited yeah. and, you know i talk to them after the shows or before the shows or whatever just i see them around out by the buses or whatever you know and i'll fucking hang and chill and talk to them and shit and they're so fucking excited man like but they're younger people you know what i mean it's really fucking cool but they love Mudman. and they love slipknot and they love papa mm. roach and they love manson and they love you know that that the, the whole fucking uh regeneration of the new metal uh you know thing uh you know that's happening right now there's this this resurgence of, of yes. new metal you know and, and it's cool again <laughs> you know <laughs> um it's really it's really fucking cool though man I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of that scene now because if you think about that or the, like every band i just named you every single one of those bands all sound different they all sound yeah, different absolutely you know what i mean like we came up with in a really cool time in music. You know what I mean? Like there was a lot of fucking really great shit happening. You got disturbed. You had Papa Roach. You had Slipknot. You had us. You had Manson. You had blah, 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 blah. Like you just, the list goes on and on. Machine Head and fucking, uh, you know, Snot. And like, you know what I mean? Like just like so many, like in every fucking system of a down. And everyone sounded different. That's right. Everyone was doing their own thing. It's fucking real testament and tribute to some really good fucking uh, times in music, man. So, um, yeah, we're 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 just we're excited about everything that's happening with us on every level, whether it's here, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in the studio, whether it's on stage. We don't care. We're just we're really fucking enjoying it, and everybody's enjoying it with us. So it makes it great. He's the future, dude. I, I I really, really can't wait to see what the next step is, uh, not just with you guys, but just in the genre and in general and the next generation that's going to be taking those influences and and pushing that forward, man. It's fucking really exciting. But uh, one thing I did want to ask you, because you, you have lived a really inspirational life and have helped a lot of people through your lyrics. Have you, have you thought about writing a book telling your story? Do you think it's time yet? I, I, you know, I have, yeah, I have, man. I had a really cool idea about doing it and the dude that I like kind of br- was going to bring in. I, I wouldn't, I don't want to say he was going to be a ghostwriter, but he was like, it was important that he kind of helped me mm. uh, do this. And he like kind of took the idea that I had and he fucking stole it and went and did it with someone else. Oh. And I was just like, fuck. And it was a really cool angle. I don't want to get into it or say it because you know, <laughs> take it before I can do it. But there's a way that I would do it. There's absolutely a way that I would do it, but it would almost be kind of a clinical fucking mm-hmm. breakdown of my life or just a different way to, to put it out there or whatever. Um, and shit, because I'm, I'm probably clinically fucking insane. And I mean, I mean, honestly, like I'm, troubled and fucked and, and unstable and all those things. Oh, we all do. Uh, and I've been chasing. Yeah, I know. But I've been chasing the better life, the better me mm. um, for a really, really long time. And I've done a lot of the work, man. It's like I haven't even really spoken about it yet because I'm not one for a bunch of fucking fanfare. But I haven't even posted or done anything. But I've been sober now for two years. Oh, congrats, man. I just man. passed my two-year mark. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. The last day of the tour was my two years. And I just don't, I just didn't make any, I, I, I haven't told anybody. I was like, I haven't really gone to the wire and been like, hey, because I don't want a bunch of people like, hey, we're fucking great, man. Cause, you know, and I, I don't yeah, need yeah. all that. You know what I mean? Like, it's two, it's been two, two fucking years. And you want to think that, you know, when you quit drinking and shit, because I was insane. I was a fucking, I was a madman, man. I drank and I was volatile and I was fucking crazy as fuck and, and just like not a great drinker. Like I was just an asshole and like I was just crazy period, you know? 
And I just got fed, fucking fed up with that dude. But, you know, I quit to try to help myself and to be a better me and to live a better life. And it just doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? It was like, you want to think that you stop doing shit like that and all the voices get quiet. And it's like, dude, they're screaming, mm. you know, and everything becomes more amplified. All the feelings, all the emotions, all the depression, all the fucking shit, you know? And like I said, I've just, I, I've done so many things in my life to try to figure it out and be better. And, you know, am I better today than I was yesterday? I hope so. I, I assume I am. Am I better today than I was two years ago? Absolutely. I know that for a fucking mm. fact. Um, you know, so, but I still have a lot of work to do on myself and I still have a lot of therapy to do on my own. And my therapy is writing those thoughts down in fucking creating, uh, and connecting, you know, like it helps me to, to be open and to be honest, knowing that I'm going to connect with someone and knowing that I'm going to help someone. And that's the reason that I want to continue to write music. That's the, my biggest thing is that the connection that I know that I'm going to make with someone. And that's my inspiration, you know? So, mm. um, and that's my muse. And, and, um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm excited, uh, to be doing it again, but I really do really need to feel like I need to get back into the creative mode of doing this, this again, I to, to, for, for my own self, for my catharsis and yes. my therapy and like for my headspace, you know? And I don't know if that answered your question at all. No, no, it did. No, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and you know what? I appreciate your honesty and sharing that with, with me, man. That was, you know, I, I, I congratulations, Absolutely. brother. That's, I'm sharing that's it with you. Thing. I'm sharing, I'm sharing it with you so you can share it with others. Thank you, man. You know what I mean? Like you're my conduit to the other to people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm sharing it with you and being honest with you because I want to be honest to my fans in mm -hmm. Australia. And I know you're going to do that. I know you're going to bridge that gap and I appreciate you and uh, what you do. Thank you so much.